Good afternoon. We'd like to thank everyone for coming to this very important meeting of the City Council as we do the people's work. At this time, I request that we all please stand for the invocation that will be given by Pastor Felton Whitfield from New Jerusalem Church of God in Christ, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor, it's good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come at this hour to thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for this day, for this is the day that which you have made. We thank you, dear Lord, for the cool breeze that you sent, for the sunshine. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that have gone forth in this day. And now we pray, our Father, that as we invoke your presence into this meeting, we ask for your guidance and your direction, not only with city council, but with every citizen. We ask, O oh God, that you will keep peace upon our lips and our hearts. We ask, dear Lord, now that you would guide the, the mayor, city council persons with more wisdom and knowledge and understanding as they lead our city. For we ask these blessings in the precious and the glorious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Members of City Council, would you please indicate your presence electronically? Seven members of City Council are present. Thank you. Members of City Council, you have before your consideration the minutes of a call meeting of June the 11th, 2012, a call meeting of June 12th, 2012, and a regular meeting of June 12th, 2012. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Move adoption. Second. Mayor, we have a motion and a second, and you will be voting electronically. Okay. The minutes are adopted 7-0. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, city council rules require a limit of up to five minutes to speak. As you approach the speaker's podium, you will notice a timer. At the beginning of your five minutes, you will see a green light. Four minutes into your remarks, you will notice a yellow light. At the end of your five minutes, you will see a red light, hear a beep, and we ask that you conclude your remarks at that time. Unfinished business, 12-239, Use Permit and Comprehensive Plan. Item A, resolution granting the request of Willow Greater Portsmouth Incorporated for a use permit to install a 32 square foot freestanding business sign at 3801 Elm Avenue. The Comprehensive Plan's future land use map calls for the area to be developed with heavy industrial. Vision principle, a robust economy for working men and women. UP 1206. First reading vote, 7-0, electronic roll call, and I have no registered speakers. Mayor, we have a motion and a second, and you will be voting electronically. Okay. This item is adopted 7-0. Item B, ordinance granting the request of the City of Portsmouth for an amendment to the City's comprehensive plan. The proposed amendment is to consider a new master plan for parks, recreation, and leisure services. Vision principle, change, and new directions. CPA 1201, first reading vote 6-1. <coughs> Electronic roll call, and I have a registered speaker. Mr. Mark godaldick yatrovsky Good evening, Mr. Mayor, honorable members of council, and fellow citizens. Last week when the master plan was presented, I had no remarks to make because it looked to me as though it was an open and shut case. And so I was rather surprised and dismayed when council member Whitehurst uh, demurred from the opinion of his colleagues about approval of the plan. The objections that he stated make no sense to me. It's not that I didn't understand what he said. I didn't understand how it was relevant to the item that was before you. The master plan is an addition to the city's comprehensive plan 
and it is a compilation of facts, statistics, data, and a great deal of public input. One thing that I appreciate about the way a number of these plans, downtown waterfront, the comprehensive plan, and several others that have come before you for approval have been done is that there is a generous helping of public input at every phase of the process. And this was no exception. So this plan gathered together a lot of information that had been in disparate places. And if used properly by you, the policy body of the city, the city council, it could pay us dividends. Mr. Whitehurst had a quibble about something that has no relationship to the purpose of that plan about access to school facilities for recreational purposes, which the plan addresses in that it describes what the current situation is. It does not preclude there being agreements between the city and the school board for the use of school facilities. And there's an item down the agenda tonight which involves a collaboration of that sort. The replacement of the existing Craddock Recreation Center with facilities at S.H. Clark and Craddock Middle School. So clearly, this is something that can be done, has been done, and if the two bodies are in agreement, will be done going forward. So I would hope that Mr. Whitehurst will have a change of heart and make this a 7-0 vote, as so many others have been, on issues where the voice of the people has been heard. Because there were many comments on this plan, again, at various phases of its development. And I want to thank council members Randall and Cherry for their comments on this item. They both, I feel, were relevant Ms. Randall talking about synergistic opportunities to make the most of what we have. Mr. Cherry talking about funding opportunities. Thank you both, and thank you all. Thank you, sir. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I will not debate you on this issue. The whole pro uh, reason for having the, 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 the discussion was the fact that we were trying to use as much land that belongs to the school division that we could use without acquiring new land. This is the first test of that use of land and was told that we don't go on school property. So I voted against it. Since then, I understand that's changed. We're going to use school property where we can, use church property where we can, use anybody's property we can that, that, that's, that serves the need of the community. So I will vote this time. I, I let, the, let the people know that I was not going in lockstep with anybody. If it's not correct, I'll vote against it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Mr. Moody. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, that subject reminds me that uh, I think the Vice Mayor is talking and, and the Speaker is talking about uh, public school property and potential use. Actually, I think we need to expand that to mean private school. Uh, we, di we discovered uh, this week, uh, thanks to uh, a citizen making me aware, that uh, in the Highland Biltmore section there's uh, a large recreation facility, potentially, that uh, the city has an agreement with, and that agreement uh, mentions that the public has use of that facility. But as it stands tonight, uh, the public doesn't have use of that facility. So. I guess, Mayor, I, what I would say is that we need to look citywide and, and make sure that we're not leaving any recreation opportunity behind, uh, whether it be uh, 
uh, public schools, which obviously there is a collaboration on that. And uh, let's include the uh, private uh, schools as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night. Members of council, we have no additional speakers. Yes. Mayor, we have a motion and a second, and you will be voting electronically. Okay. Perfect. This item is adopted 7 0. City Manager's Report 12 258, adoption of an ordinance to transfer $450,000 from the FY 2011 12 General Fund Operating Budget to the FY 2011 12 Capital Improvement Fund for the Craddock Recreational facil Facilities Improvement. Vision Principle, a robust and prospering economy for working men and women. Electronic roll call, and I have a registered speaker, Mr. C.J. Bodner. Good evening, Mayor Wright, Vice Mayor Whitehurst, members of council, city staff. My name is C.J. Bodner. I am the Director of Community Development for Hoggard Your Associates, located at 901 Port Center Parkway here in the city of Portsmouth. Uh, I am before you tonight uh, partially as a response to something that came up in the PRHA meeting last week regarding the timeline for the Craddock pro Project. And since you all are uh, with this resolution discussing uh, the monetary contributions to deal with the Craddock property. Uh, I felt this would be the best time to discuss the schedule. Uh, you all probably received yesterday via either email or hand delivery a letter directed to uh, Mr. Har Harold Short, uh, the uh, director of PRHA, and also the city manager, Mr. Chandler, uh, discussing the timeline and what the proposed timeline is. And what we want, what Craddock Properties want to do is come before you all and publicly let you know where we are with the project. Um, as, uh, we are, as of the end of last week, have resolved a couple of design issues that we had with city staff uh, that was resolved at the end of last week. And I'm proud to let you all know that the engineering plans for the first two phases of Afton Green subdivision and the recreational plans for the Craddock Middle School will be submitted at the beginning of next week to the city for review. The two largest items that are outstanding uh, are items that the city staff uh, is working on, which is the underground storage tank removal, uh, which we need to have the closure letter on that in order to uh, be able to finish the phase one environmental assessment of the property. And also there are a number of encroachments on the property where individuals on adjoining properties have built items on the Craddock High School site whether it's a lay down yard for their business or the overhang for the Burger King or a fence, uh, those are items that the city is working towards resolving and we anticipate that'll be done within the next month. Um, but what Craddock Properties wanted me to do was, was come before you, let you know that they are firmly committed to the project, they are enthusiastically uh, awaiting the point in time where we will be building houses, uh, which we are looking to that to happen next year for houses to actually be going up, and we want to close the property as expeditiously as proper, uh, possible. And I'm available if you have any questions. Yeah, let me ask you, so you're saying these outstanding items are just the city's responsibility? No, sir, the only item that, really the only items that the developer has left to do are the phase one environmental assessment, which okay. cannot be completed until the DEQ closure letters right. received from the city, and two, get the engineering plans done, which will be going in on Monday now that we've resolved the design issues with the city staff. Okay, very good. So outside of those issues, once they're resolved, you're ready to close, you're ready to make this financial commitment to the recreational facility, and we're ready to start building. Yes, sir. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, sir. My okay. client is ready to move forward with this. We just need to resolve these the issues that I just mentioned a few minutes ago okay. regarding the encroachment in the DEQ letters. Okay. Mr. Manager, can you speak on these outstanding issues or is this purely PRHA? Mr. Mayor, I have not had a chance to read the correspondence. I heard Mr. Bodner say that we've gotten it. It's something I have not seen the incoming mail yet. Okay. So I wouldn't feel comfortable speaking, and I'm sure it probably has been delivered. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Who's, who's removing the tank? Say that again, sir. Who's removing the tank? 
removing the tank, the city was removing the tank. And when they removed the tank, they did not backfill the excavation properly. Uh, we have a report from the geotechnical engineer where uh, six of the 18 tests, when they went back and tested the compaction later, failed. So it has to be recompacted, it has to be redone? That has not been redone yet, no, okay. sir. And in addition, the uh, city has hired a firm to acquire a DEQ closure letter stating that the tank has been closed properly, which will prevent a phase two environmental assessment from having to be done on the property. And when you say city, are you talking about city or are you talking about housing authority? Uh, I believe the city contracted that work. City contracted that? Councilman, Not yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'm a little bit concerned. You sent this letter. Everybody got a copy. And you indicated that the yellow highlighted is what only thing's been done. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You tell me the rest of these things have to be done before you can close. Yes, sir. That is per the development agreement that was signed between the developer and the city. And some of those items date back a year, for example, the removal of the, the lights on the uh, street lights on the property. Man, I think we need to have someone to go and look at this. If we had an auditor, they could do that. But this list, it shows me about seven or eight items that's been completed according to this letter. There's about 25 or 30 that have not been completed when I'm looking at this. <clears throat> Why don't we allow the manager to read the correspondence and then get back with us on it. Yeah. Because again, that it is disturbing, but we need to make sure that we know what the process is and what's the hang up and, and where do we go. So if you got any feedback from the we, city or PRHA as to the status of these items? Uh, we did receive an email from Brian Donahue with PRHA today saying they anticipate the closure letter on July sec uh, sometime July 2nd thereabouts. <laughs> I'm not sure if that means it's the closure letter from DEQ or submittal of the package to DEQ. I, I don't know the status on that. Okay. Well, well, Mr. Manager, you, you get that right. All right. Uh, Councilman Moody. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Mr. Bogner. Good evening, uh, sir. Aren't there also some encroachment <laughs> issues there uh, with, with some uh, uh, contiguous property? Yes, sir. To the Craddock site? Yes, sir. And, and those encroachment issues uh, in a conversation I had with Mr. Gene White beginning of last week, the letter regarding those encroachments was supposed to go out the end of last week. But I don't know this. Uh, I haven't received an update on that at this point in time. And this project, uh, since its announcement, is going on, what, two years? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, we somewhere in the process, uh, we, we need to, uh, I hear three years, but uh, I thought it was two. It's been going on for two years. The first year of that was basically the time period of getting the rezoning done right. on the property and, and working through and those issues with staff. And approximately how much uh, the developer's money does he have in this project at this point? Uh, I believe he has spent close to $200,000 at this point in time. And, and we, we still aren't close to breaking ground on this. No, I, I think that we are probably within 120 days of taking down the building. Of taking down the building. And, and, and once we're at the same time that the building is going down, uh, Councilman Moody, right. they will be building the, the streets on the first phase. Okay. So that, that can be done con, uh, concurrently at the same time. Mayor, uh, you know, hopefully we can look at this and, and learn something from it. But here we have a willing developer who's uh, unusual for Portsmouth, but uh, he's writing his own checks and we can't get this thing to market uh, any quicker than two years. Uh, shame on us. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <coughs> Council members, we have no additional speakers on this item. Second. Mayor, we have a motion and a second. You'll be voting electronically. Okay. This item is adopted 7-0. 12-259, adoption of an ordinance to appropriate $550,200 and six cents in the FY 2012-13 grants fund from USDA for summer food grant program. Program grant. Vision principal, neighborhoods, and a sense of community, electronic roll call, and I have no registered speaker. Move adoption. Mayor, we have a motion and a second, and you're voting electronically. Okay, very good. This item is adopted 
12-260, adoption of an ordinance to transfer $45,000 from the FY 2011-12 general fund operating budget to the FY 11-12 capital improvement fund for the Pokey Smoky 2 track renovations. Vision principal, neighborhoods, and sense of community, electronic roll call, and I have no registered speakers. Okay. Let me, uh, first of all, could we, Mr. Manager, is it possible to get a quick summary of what we just discussed in the work session on the purpose and what's going on with Pocus Smoky, just for the public? Can we put Mr. Godfrey on the spot? We He's can, smiling, yes. We, we can entertain Mr. Godfrey. Well, is that a smile? No. <laughs> Just yes, for a point of information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, good evening. This is uh, um, a proposal to move some funds out of the, uh, some unspent funds out of the FY12 operating budget into a CIP account for um, uh, next fiscal year, which begins uh, next week, um, so that um, we can uh, replace the track completely at City Park on which Pokey Smokey runs and uh, so that we can continue to operate it continuously rather than the the, uh, the uh, erratic schedule that we've had since we started the new train. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Councilman Moody. Thank you, Mayor. That was a more general briefing than we received in the public work session. Basically, the train that we bought from this uh, company doesn't fit the track. So what I, what I would like to suggest that we go back to the manufacturer of the train and ask them, why did you build us a train that doesn't fit our track and we have to go back and spend, I think it was mentioned, $100,000. You know, even if we get 50 of it back, it's more than we got now. And I can't imagine that, uh, you know, we ordered a train without establishing the specifications. So I would like uh, for somebody to, to look into this and report back to council. You know, it's 100000 of taxpayer money. And once again, you know, when you order a train for a certain size track, a gauge track, you expect the train to fit the track. And consequently, the kids of the city are going to have a large majority of another summer without a pokey smoky. So thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Madam Clerk? Uh, we have no speakers on this item. We're in need of a motion. I move. Second. Mayor, we have a motion and a second, and you're voting electronically. This item is adopted 7 0. Okay, very good. 12 261, adoption of an ordinance to transfer $180,000 from the FY12 general fund operating budget contingency account to the city attorney's FY12 general fund operating budget for legal defense fees. Vision principle, efficient, responsive government, electronic roll call, and to have no registered speakers. Okay, let me, um, Mr. Manager, or maybe the attorney, did we not just transfer about 400000 a couple of months ago? Is this part of that or is this an addition to? This is an additional appropriation, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Or an additional transfer, excuse me. I got you. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor, we have a motion and a second, and you're voting electronically. Okay, we're good. This item is adopted 7-0. 12-262, adoption of a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a deed and other necessary instruments conveying approximately 0.4656 acres in the Westbury neighborhood for the construction of five home ownership units. Vision principal, neighborhoods, and a sense of community. Electronic roll call, and I have no registered speakers. Mayor, we have a motion and a second, and you're voting electronically. Very good. This item is adopted 7-0. 12-263, adoption of a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an easement to Columbia Gas of Virginia, Incorporated, to install a gas pipeline on the Churchland High School property. Vision principles, a bold, excuse me, a proud military community, and a robust economy for working men and women. Electronic roll call, and I have no registered speakers. Adoption. 
second. Mayor, we have a motion and a second, and you're voting electronically. Very good. This item is adopted 7 0. 12 264, adoption of a resolution appointing the Honorable Kenneth I. Wright and City Manager Kenneth L. Chandler to the Governing Board of the Transportation District Commission of Hampton Roads. Vision Principle, Efficient, Responsive Government. Electronic Roll Call, and I have a registered speaker, Mr. Mark Godaldik Yutrovsky. Good evening again, Mr. Mayor, honorable members of council, and fellow citizens. We've had some changes in the way appointments are done in the Commonwealth, and I don't believe that they've been necessarily improvements over what existed before. The General Assembly has invested in the governor powers of appointment of representatives from localities to several boards, one of them being SIPSA, uh, the Port Authority, and now the Transportation District Commission. Unlike some of the other appointments, there is still the ability of a locality to determine its own representation, but in the case of the Transportation District Commission, the governor will appoint somebody from Portsmouth to fill the citizen position. So we have one ex officio member, which is to be the mayor, and an alternate, which is to be the city manager. It's a loss of local autonomy that I find disturbing. <clears throat> I don't believe the governor is as aware as the locality of who is best able to speak for that locality. And I suspect that there are certain partisan <coughs> political considerations that go along with these kinds of appointments. As we've seen in the recent dust up over the leadership of UVA, The governor's appointees don't always satisfy the public in terms of their execution of their responsibilities. I'm a believer that government is best left as close to home as possible. So I am not in favor of this change despite the fact that it's a done deal. I want to register my objection. However, my objection is to the manner in which the appointments are proceeding and not to the appointees themselves. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Just a point of information there, sir. You, the person that the governor is going to appoint is being recommended by the council. So we're submitting names of individuals to the governor, and he will pick one of those. So if that eases your mind any? Not much, okay. because, <laughs> because as the IRS... Don't trust us either, do you? As the, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. That's Go not ahead. the point. Okay. As the IRS is not bound by its own advice, the governor is not bound by yours. Thank you. Well point. <laughs> Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. We have no additional speakers on this item. <laughs> Mayor, we have a motion and a second, and you'll be voting electronically. Okay. This item is adopted 7 0. New business 12 265, Boards and Commissions. Councilman Moody. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Mayor, members of Council. There are no appointments to uh, announce tonight. Okay. 12 266, items submitted by Council members. Okay. Um, let me, I've got a couple items. First of all, I want to congratulate and Say happy 250th anniversary to Trinity Episcopal Church. We had uh, 
recognition ceremony uh, Sunday at 1030, which was outstanding, and it was well attended by representatives here to council, myself, the vice mayor, Councilman Hertig, um, Congressman Bobby Scott was there, former Senator uh, Coyle was there speaking and reading a letter on behalf of the governor, and uh, it was well attended, and I think it's an event, and recognition. Hopefully we have a representative here that will speak a little on that uh, when he comes up. But uh, again, congratulations to Trinity and uh, to all of the great things that that church has done in this city for the last 250 years. Uh, secondly, uh, last Saturday I attended a uh, house dedication for the Green family here in Portsmouth that, uh, again, one of the homes that were built by Habitat for Humanity. And um, um, you can't say enough about businesses, people in the community, volunteering, chipping in, and showing your love and, and respect for mankind. It was outstanding, and this family and this young lady was so appreciative. Uh, the Virginia International Terminals, the Virginia Port Authority, and quite a few other corporations all chipped in to make this possible. And uh, actually the owner, I think she had to put in about 200 hours of labor herself along with a lot of other host of volunteers. So I was really pleased to be able to make that dedication and to see once again the spirit of volunteerism and the spirit of, of, of love and, and unity in our city alive and well. And uh, lastly, I would just like to, I don't know how many of you caught the article in the current Sunday, our school system and the huge progress that they have made and all of the accolades and, and, and things that were annotated in there. I won't go through all of them, but I would refer you to the article on uh, Sunday. Again, investment, reinvestment, return on our investment. We tend to talk about those things a lot, and it's important that we bring up the good points and the bad points and, 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 and make sure that we're, we're treating everybody fairly. So I want to say congratulations to the school system and the superintendent for a, a job well done. With that, uh, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. At the June Finance Committee meeting, there were insufficient members, so we held a general discussion and we were talking about Social Security offset. They have a, the conclusion reached by the members of the Finance Committee is if the city desires, the committee is willing to accept the assignment of this very sensitive issue to review all applicable reports, findings, and other data that may exist to hear statements, reports, both pro and con, at the conclusion of rendering objective recommendation to the city council. They're looking at recommending four, uh, four meetings. The first one, they will call for information and facts. The second one, will review and debate the facts and issues. The third one, will discuss potential outcomes. And the fourth, will make a recommendation. That comes from the committee, sir. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Moody. Thank you, Mayor. I have uh, actually a few things, but before I go over those, I'd like to recommend, uh, recommend, I'd like to recognize <laughs> a very distinguished guest in our audience uh, tonight, and that's Dr. Alexandria uh, Peck uh, Berger, who's, uh, she does a lot of things, but uh, right now she's an international development strategist. And, uh, Graduate uh, mayor uh, of uh, ODU, which uh, is always go, close go to your heart. But uh, uh, very pleased to ha have you with us tonight. And uh, welcome. Don't be a stranger. Come back and visit us. Uh, I do have a few things, Mayor. First of all, I'd like to uh, uh, give a hand to the uh, no no toll folks and uh, Roger and Glenna Cornett and. Terry Danaher, I don't see Terry uh, tonight, and uh, and uh, the mayor of uh, Cavalier, Cavalier Manor in Brighton, and uh, <laughs> and his sidekick uh, Reggie in the audience there. But a, a lot of volunteers put on a terrific fundraiser uh, in the form of a garage sale. They got a lot of publicity, needed publicity, and hopefully get some people from other cities. Portsmouth seems to be leading the charge as we. As we say, but uh, uh, hopefully this got word out that we'll get some people from Virginia Beach and Norfolk and Suffolk and Chesapeake to to join uh, to join the war. Uh, the governor won a battle, but uh, uh, battles or wars are won by a series of battles, and uh, uh, Portsmouth is leading the charge on this one. Also, uh, in an entirely different uh, area, 
uh, four, 400 uh, meter race. Uh, and, and this one's kind of a testimony when, you know, <laughs> things go bad in our lives a lot of times. And uh, it's how we respond to that. And LaShawn uh, Merritt uh, certainly responded uh, with uh, renewed vigor and determination. And consequently, he's going on to the Olympics. And uh, I think he'll probably bring home uh, a gold, another gold medal for uh, the city of Portsmouth. Uh, Can so, I interrupt for an applause? Uh, absolutely. Right. Councilman Moody. Uh, the other thing, I'm getting a lot of questions, uh, Mayor, uh, reference uh, street paving. Uh, not bad questions. Uh, they, they see it going on around our city, and everybody's wanting to know uh, what the schedule is and how much money uh, do we have left because they want their street paved. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm all, uh, if uh, I could, uh, don't want to put him on the spot, especially since he's getting short, going to be retiring here in another, uh, what, four days? Uh, three days. Three days. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, extend, I extended your time. <laughs> uh, could, could you give us just a quick update, uh, uh, Richard, if you would, on the, what the schedule is and what people can expect? I'll say one thing. There's always a street next to the last street you did that isn't getting it done. <laughs> Um, we've, we've basically about finished up the contract for paving with the monies from this year. And, and the, new, the new contract will go into the, in, following this. I don't have the list here in front of me. I could have brought it had I known you were asking. But um, we're pretty much finished with the, the ones for this year's contract. And we'll start a new budget starting July 1. Um, but what I will add is the, the, the paving a lot of people have seen around town in the intersections. Mm -hmm. We had eight intersections done through through highway safety improvement funds from the state. And that made a big impact for each of those intersections. We had them completely paved as we did them. And there's, there's another 10 intersections coming up next year that we also just received bids on and are getting ready to award. So you see, uh, you'll see that again at, at, eight more, at 10 more places in town. So that's making up a lot of the stuff people are seeing. And, and it's very visible in the intersections and made a big improvement. So that's, that's going to be the focus of next year's okay. uh, in general terms. Thank, thanks, uh, Richard. Uh, going to miss you around the city hall here. Uh, the other thing, Mayor, um, the Newport community. It's been brought to my attention that uh, a lot of things, uh, as we know, it went into receivership. Uh, but the, uh, I guess the receiver, the person operating the community after uh, uh, the Sandlers, uh, were supposed to take care of a punch list of things that needed to be done in that community. I'm being told that uh, those things haven't been done, so I would like for staff to uh, check into that and maybe give council an update on the progress or lack thereof, uh, what that timetable is. Do you have those items, or is that is that documented no, somewhere? No, no, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, Just people. urban uh, uh, okay. information, but... Uh, if uh, we could look into it and uh, see if we can uh, uh, verify exactly what it is needs to be done out there, that would be good. Uh, also, on the sad note, and I know we don't usually uh, talk about a lot of sad things up here, but uh, uh, it was mentioned, uh, talking about the Craddock community a little while ago, uh, Craddock really lost a, a fine gentleman in, in the form of a scoutmaster there. Uh, Bobby Bracy, who uh, I think all of us knew, respected. He, uh, he did tremendous work with the children out there. And uh, I know I was shocked and saddened, as was everybody who uh, read about uh, the tragic loss of uh, Mr. Bracy uh, uh, last Saturday. But uh, I just wanted his family and uh, uh, to know that uh, they're certainly in our uh, prayers Absolutely. Uh, tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right, with that, uh, you alluded to uh, Mr. Hartman, uh, you three days away. Is there any final comments or things you'd like to pass on to us, any words of wisdom? I know we chatted the other day, and I asked you, what did you want to do when you retire? And you commented that you wanted to come back as a non-agenda speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just ought to pray that I don't. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, 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 how many years, sir? 
Um, 36. 36 years. Well, on behalf of us, we want to thank Thank you and good luck. And thank I'm you. 12 268 non, non agenda speakers. Our first speaker is Ms. Etta Hankerson, and she's followed by Mr. J. Brewer Moore. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Council and citizens of Portsmouth, this is new for me. My name is Etta Hankerson. I'm a mediator for the Virginia Supreme Court. As a mediator for the Supreme Court and an individual who puts on um, Could you speak into the mic? Sorry. Is it better? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Etta Hankerson, and I'm a mediator for the Virginia Supreme Court. As a member, uh, as a mediator of the court, I'm really interested in ethics and how things is done. As a student at Notre Dame University and um, in the issue, sorry, as a student at Notre Dame University studying executive negotiations, we always taught about ethics. So this evening, I'd like to talk to the council and the citizens of Portsmouth about ethics. Um, Excuse me one second. I want to appeal to the citizens of Portsmouth, Virginia, to select a mayor who has integrity, who is ethical, and has moral fiber, and that one who we do not question their moral turpitude or, or his moral turpitude is not questionable at this time. Um, I am, I think the most gracious uh, behavior of all is to have a mayor or an individual whose behavior is subserved that he leaves his DNA around the city of Portsmouth. An individual whose doors, whose door and his home opens like as if it's a home of irrepute. I think the citizens of Portsmouth should this time, when they select the mayor, select the mayor, you need to know your mayor. You need to understand who your mayor is. And I think the citizens of Portsmouth, let me go back just a little bit. As a citizen, uh, the community, we are stakeholders in the community. We have a right to know about our mayor. We have a right to know, you. things have changed. It's not the same anymore. Your business is our business and when you represent the city. So I'm asking the citizens of Portsmouth, so when you go to elect your mayor in November, elect the mayor who has integrity, who has more fiber, and one who you don't have to question their more turpitude. Also, We've seen too many um, politicians fall today because of their lack of more ethics. And for the females who the individual mayors or politicians want to hang out with, I said this to you. If you're going to select an individual who you want to ride on their to coattails, pick an individual whose coattail is clean and not one that's tainted. The citizen enforcement will not allow the mayor who represented them to taint their city based on their immoral behavior. Thank you. Following Mr. Moore is Ms. Joyce Rumble. Uh, my name is Jay Brewer Moore, and I'd like to talk about just a bit what happened 200 years ago today. 200 years ago today, the United States declared war upon Great Britain. 55 years earlier, Portsmouth was involved in military events during the opening of the American Revolution. It happened right here. My term as a history commissioner ends this week. It's been a long time since Flag Day 2005 produced interest in Portsmouth's role in the War of 1812. Your city council persons resolved to support Virginia's observance of the War of 1812 Bicentennial. Now what might help you in this observance? I'll offer three suggestions to the council and to the city manager. One, name someone to represent Portsmouth's interests. The city manager's legislative affairs liaison is unable to assume such responsibility. Surely, someone in the city manager's office can spark plug the Hampton Roads 2013 program. That brings the Virginia celebration to Hampton Roads next year. 
And then in 2014, the National Star Spangled Banner celebration. Mayor Wright was briefed at Fort Henry on what to expect in that year, and I think we've now started, uh, the war's been declared and we'll be seeing this on onward. The second point that I would offer to the council, mismanagement of the City History Commission program is known to the deputy city manager who can, with your expression of interest, rectify problems blocking appreciation and observance of local history. Four years ago, I spoke to the city council. That was on April 22nd, 2008. And offered a suggestion that the history commission be shifted from responsibility of the museum's department to the library department. Nothing has been done in four years, but I'll um, suggest that uh, the city manager take a look at this. And the third suggestion that I offer tonight is to review chapter 28 of the city code pertaining to the history commission. This legislation is 11 years old and warrants review and possible revision. As uh, the McLaughlin Group signs off every Sunday night on WHRO, all I can say is bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, Vice Mayor Whitehurst. Thank you, Mayor. I presented to the council today a list of things that Portsmouth is. I woke up in the morning about two, two nights ago, about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, and made a list of those things, what Portsmouth really is. We are a college town, we're a military town, all those things. And in history, we do a poor job of our history. We have things that people will want to come and see, from parks and recreation to fishing. If, you, if you're here in Portsmouth, you can go 200 miles and fish in salt water, fresh water, go to the beach, all those things that are here. I'm hoping that we will do a better job of what we're doing. I know you've been an advocate of trying to get our history straight. Uh, and may I mention about Trinity Church, 250 years. We should have been doing something ourselves because the city of Portsmouth also is 250 years old. We didn't do anything about it. So what I'm hoping that we'll do is a better job of defining what Portsmouth really is. When TCC moved from Suffolk to Portsmouth, we picked up 11,000 students, 11,000. That's a huge college. Not only that, our education starts before kids start going to school, preschool, all the way to first college. So we, we have a very a large amount of, uh, of, of money in education, and we will need to do more. Uh, I hope that we'll take this thing seriously and try to find some, some entity somewhere that can put all this in a package give us an identity to say, what is Portsmouth? What, who are we? We are a wonderful community. Wonderful community. We have good people, good work ethics. We just have not packed it ourselves. So, Brewer, we're going to miss you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Our next speaker is Ms. Joyce Rumble, and she's followed by Ms. Dolores Knight. Good evening to everyone. I was very relentless to come here, but you know I talked to my God about everything. He told me go. Um, I've been living at 422 County Street, that right down here on County Street for four years. From Parkview, I didn't know the area. So I called around and asked where I could park at, and they told me I could park in the parking lot due to the fact I had handicap um, parking on I mean, a handicap license on my truck. The other day I got, came outside because sometimes I suffer rheumatoid arthritis and sometimes I can't come outside. I'm a retired nurse. I work for the city of Portsmouth as a CNA for 22 years. I came out, I had a ticket on my truck. So I said, why am I getting a ticket? You know? And when I came down here, they told me to speak to Mr. Jack Austin. 
I think he's a meter manager or something. He told me I wasn't allowed to park there in about four hours. Then he told me I was where um, the handicap places was. One is across the street from the library. One is over there where Dollar General is. One is at Drug Center. And the other one is um, down there where Denver the Motel is. I don't live down that area. I live across the street from um, Sons and Pub. I live across the street from G's Barbershop. So I'm wondering, and the lot they gave me the ticket in is, um, Thank you. Ready goes. Lot um, location it says King Square. So I'm wondering, there is no handicap places to park there anywhere. Sometimes I cannot come outside and walk because due to the fact of my ankle. So when I parked in front of the Suds and Pub Shop, I came out there the following morning. I had a note on the, on my truck telling me I cannot park there. So I'm wondering, in this lot that we have with reserve, um, parking is out there. And by being on a fixed com, fixed income, I'm ha- if I get my reserve, I'm going to have to put that in my budget. And then I can't afford to put the money in the meter constantly to keep that going for the park out there. So I'm wondering, on Counter Street, somewhere in this area, can there be some handicapped parking? That's all I need. Just, just if it ain't number one or two in the area where I live at. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Councilman Chair. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I've been having an offline discussion with the manager, and, and if someone from staff would, would get with you and see what and look into the issue, I don't see Ms. Hogue, but uh, out here tonight. But uh, you have someone else. Yes. And we're going to have Miss Dana Woodson get with you and get some additional information. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dr. Edmonds. He took care. Okay. Thank you, sir. Well done. Our next speaker is Ms. Dolores Knight, and she's followed by Mr. Roger Cornett. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Vice Mayor Whitehurst, members of City Council, Attorney Oaksman, and the citizens. My name is Dolores Knight. I live in the Craddock area. Mayor Wright, at the last City Council meeting, you failed to extend time to a welcome, well-respected citizen of Portsmouth who was making City Council aware of an important situation with one of the city's partners' agencies. Mayor Wright, you were rude to that citizen, and you also failed to get con- con- concurrence with City Council prior to cutting the citizen off. I've noticed that you only tell citizens good job when there's something said that you agree with. You also treat some of the council members with disrespect and try to limit discussion amongst city council members. In short time, as mayor, you have anointed yourself as the smartest person in the room as if you didn't know, didn't need for the rest of the council to know. You try to dominate meetings when you should be encouraging healthy, professional discussions of the issues facing Portsmouth. In order to improve as a city, as a city we need a diversity of ideas, not someone who always wants his ideas aired as you do. The chair of a meeting should set the tone. Unfortunately, the Portsmouth, the tone was setting in a sore tone. Chair should encourage democracy and ensure everyone is involved. I recently attended a meeting for the HVAC, which is a heating and air conditioning problem at Churchill High School, was discussed. Instead of allowing discussion among council members who said that you had walked through with some of the rooms and you would meet with the school board to discuss the problem. Thankfully, a council member spoke up and said, the whole council should be involved, not just you and the school board chairman. In addition, it was mentioned that you have no professional expertise on the HVAC system. 
This is another example of you trying to leave leave council out of discussions. Mayor Wright, you are a council member. Again, Mayor Wright, you are a council member. Your title as mayor gives you additional ceremony duties and allows you to chair meetings. Mayor, I suggest that you start setting the proper tone and stop being rude and acting so bully. Thank you for your time. Thank you and good job. <laughs> uh, Madam Clerk. Our final speaker is Mrs. Glenna Cornett. I don't want to touch that, but anyway. Good evening, Mayor Wright and Vice Mayor uh, Whitehurst and members of the City Council. My name is Roger Cornett and I live in Park Manor. I'm here to speak to you tonight concerning a situation that happened to me that the day that Governor McDonald and Governor Romney were in town at Crofton Industries. I had received an invitation the day before the event to attend the function from the Romney camp. I did RSVP that I would attend. While I was there, I was standing in the parking lot behind the SUV that belonged to Charles Greenhood, talking with him and Tony Goodwin and another man from the Virginia Beach Tea Party. We did discuss some issues concerning the tolls, but were not protesting. It was hot that day and Charles had refreshments that he was given to the people. There were some guys who were protesting the tolls with signs outside the parking lot on the main road. I walked about 10 feet, 15 feet away from the other guys and was talking to someone else. A sergeant with the Portsmouth Police Department walked up to me and asked me if I knew that I was on private property. I told him yes. It was the parking lot designated for the visitors going to the event. He then said, are you going to give me a hard time? I was dumbfounded when he asked me that. I told him that I was there because of an invitation to the event, uh, and I had RSVP'd to that I would attend. He then told me that I'm not supposed to be, on, to be protesting there. I did not have a sign in my hand when he approached me. I told him that if he continued to aggravate me that I would have him before the city council and the Portsmouth police chief. He walked away from me and made a phone call. He got in his K-9 truck and pulled up beside me. The dog began to bark like he was trying to come through the door glass after me. He sat there for a minute then drove away. I felt he was trying to imitate me. I did not know this officer, and I feel like someone had, to, had instructed him to harass me. I don't believe that Chief Hargis would have condoned this behavior. How many sergeants drive a K-9 truck? Counsel, this is not the way an officer is supposed to represent this badge and the Portsmouth Police Department. They need to be taking some of the drug dealers off the street instead of harassing law-abiding citizens. Thank you for listening to my concerns. Thank you, sir. Good night. Our final speaker is Mrs. Glenna Cornett. Good evening, Mayor Wright, Vice Mayor Whitehurst, Council, Mr. Chandler, Mr. Oaksman, and Ms. White. My name is Glenna Cornett, and I live in Park Manor. I'm speaking to you about a concern I have about an article I read in this past Sunday's Virginian Pilot. It concerns the rush on the port deal about the APM terminals. Seems like Governor McDonnell is at it again. Wasn't the Midtown and Downtown toll deal enough to devastate Portsmouth and the surrounding areas? Now he has a proposal to transfer the monopoly on Hampton Roads port operations to a private entity that will have no legislative hurdle to clear. 
week. I'm going to read an excerpt from the article and ask the question, where were our legislators and what were they doing? And what are you, the council, trying to do in this uh, deal? This was from the opinion page, Sunday, June the 24th. The issue, is, uh, the title is, Rush on Port Deal Brings New Doubts. The issue, the record of the governor's office provides reason for caution on privatization deals. And where we stand, state isn't doing enough to ensure strong competing bids. For one of the most business-friendly states in America, Virginia seems to be making a habit of negotiating disturbingly bad deals for itself. The more disturbing deal could have consequences that last for generations and carry a cost far greater than selling off Virginia's liquor monopoly. Unlike Governor Bob McDonald's ABC proposal, a proposal to transfer the monopoly on Hampton Roads port operations to a private entity will have no clear or no legislative hurdles to, to clear. The proposal involves the APM terminals incorporated taking over operations at the Norfolk, Portsmouth, and Newport News terminals in exchange for close to $4 billion over 48 years. APM would pay as much as $1.3 billion up front and transfer APM's state-of-the-art terminal in Portsmouth to state ownership. The deal certainly doesn't appear to help Portsmouth. Transfer of APM's terminal to state ownership would mean the loss of the city's biggest real estate taxpayer and $4.5 million in annual revenue. That would be devastating to a city in which about half the property is already tax exempt. In other words, it could end up striking another deal like the one for the Midtown and Downtown Tunnels. The few details available for that 58-year contract left Massey, a private equity investor and vocal supporter of public-private partnerships, worried that the state left a lot of value on the table. So what business wouldn't be friendly to a state so willing to do that? And again, I hope you all will try to do something uh, to stop another bad deal that will totally ruin our city. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Members of the City Council, there's no additional business to come before you this evening. Okay. All right. We're adjourned.